Hey, what's going on, Z Nation? Zade here, ZSPN. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about Dwight Howard as it concerns the comparison between his 2013 with the Los Angeles Lakers versus uh, the Dwight Howard 2020 with the Los Angeles Lakers. I just want to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions about the comparison between those particular years of Dwight Howard as a Los Angeles Laker. Now, before anything, like always, please be sure to like this video. Just Subscribe to the channel, share my videos all over Facebook, Twitter, all the good social media stuff. And guys, like always, please be sure to like my page on Facebook, ZSPN, and also follow me on Twitter at ZSPN underscore sports on Twitter. Like always, I'll leave the links in the description of this video so you guys can check them out. Without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. So guys, we already know the story about Dwight Howard uh, back in his, his 2013 and 2020 season. Now, but let's just talk about the recap of between those two years of Dwight Howard. Back in 2013, the Lakers traded for Dwight Howard for, I believe they traded for, uh, you know, what they had. I think it was Andrew Bynum and... I believe it was another player involved. Uh, it was like a three-way contra, uh, three-way uh, trade that had something to do with the 76ers trading Andre Iguodala at that time to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, but, you know, it was just a whole different scenario at that time. But the Lakers traded for a better version of a center that we used to have in Dwight Howard at that time. And guys, if you really think about it, at that time, the Lakers. And Laker fans, they were excited. They were so surprised that the Lakers pulled off a trade like this in recent uh, history. I mean, we all know the Lakers, when they pull off trades, it's just unbelievably, um, um, you know, unimaginable. I mean, we had uh, Kareem, and you know, we had certain players that got traded to the Lakers that were a ga huge game changer. I mean... This one in particular was something recently that the Lakers made that it was just unquestionable one of the, the best at that time. And, you know, Dwight Howard coming off a two years, uh, you know, removed from, you know, being a in the finals against the Lakers, ironically. But, you know, at that time, the Lakers won the 2009 uh, championship at that time. But since then, they won back to back and at that time the Lakers were just two years removed from winning the back-to-back -back championships so um, at that time it was a great move and the Lakers were just trying to build a huge uh, advantage to become a, a contention at that time for a title at that time but unfortunately as we all know it did not work out at the end and there was injuries that occurred and at that time sadly Kobe Bryant uh, teared his Achilles and he was just done for the end of the season and uh, the only players that were active at that time that could have um, you know you know basically take the Lakers to a playoffs was Dwight Howard, Pal Gasol and there's got to be a player in mind that I'm forgetting there was Ron Artez at that time and you know, and Steve Nash, and at and the coach at that time was Mike D'Antoni, and you know during that time in 2013, it was a basically a sad moment in recent time because that's where it all went downhill because after that off season in 2013, Dwight Howard went uh, took his talents to Houston and signed a huge contract there leaving us uh, to basically die in the dust and um, you know that's just ended up uh, being in in the history books of one of the uh, most uh, weakest move that ever happened in Lakers history uh, when you have a high caliber uh, center at that time uh, leaving uh, leaving LA for uh, Houston and guys we pull out all the strings for him to re-sign with the Los Angeles Lakers but unfortunately you know he just did not like the uh, the atmosphere over there and the whole uh, drama back then you know he wanted Phil Jackson instead of Mike D'Antoni and you know it's just ended up being a huge letdown because of what uh, 
Dwight Howard uh, wanted and, you know, the drama that ensued in the Los Angeles Lakers at that time. And, you know, since then, the Lakers haven't been the, sen the same since. I mean, you know, I believe it's now seven years since then, the Lakers have not reached the playoffs. They have not had a winning season or had a winning record whatsoever. And we just signed some mediocre players. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Lakers signed certain players like Tim Vey Mozgov, who obviously the Lakers overpaid. And I think they're still paying him uh, after trading him uh, to the uh, to the Nets at that time uh, but you know it's just ironically the Lakers at that time with with Dwight Howard did not work well but I'm here to tell you guys uh, when it comes to stats wise Dwight Howard had the stats I mean he averaged 19 points a game he had almost 10 to 12 rebounds a game and I'm here to tell you at that time he was fighting through injuries so ironically it's kind of hard to say uh, you know, at that time when the Lakers were struggling with a Dwight Howard and Kobe Bryant, how they were learning how to mesh well together. Uh, it was just at that time, you know, stats wise, it was there, but it, you know, it was nothing compared to what Dwight Howard is performing in 2020. Now, 2020, we already know the the circumstance. Dwight Howard got uh, got a buyout from the the Minnesota, uh, sorry, uh, the um, the Memphis Grizzlies and obviously he wanted to rejoin with the Los Angeles Lakers and some people most of maybe 90% of Laker fans did not want Dwight Howard because what he did back in 2012 and just somehow the Lakers saw something in Dwight Howard that showed that they wanted to bring him in and there was a lot of scenarios at that time because you know Cousins uh, Boogie Cousins, you know, suffered an injury and the Lakers needed to look for a center real quick because all they had was JaVale McGee. And the only player at that time was available that could have, uh, you know, mashed very well with the Lakers at that time was Dwight Howard. And uh, for me, I actually agreed on the Lakers signing on Dwight Howard because, you know, we needed somebody who can grab rebounds, uh, you know, be a great defender and you know, somehow just play very well off the bench. And so far this season, he's been doing that. He's been doing that throughout the season so far, which we all wanted from him is to grab those rebounds and obviously play great defense. And as of right now, he's ranked second with the Los Angeles Lakers as being the, in, you know, the best in blocks. So, um, so far when it's all said and done, if I had to say, the comparisons between 2013 and 2020 the only difference is is personality wise personality Dwight Howard back in 2013 he expected that the Lakers will make him the number one guy and obviously he wanted that during and you know he expected from that from the Lakers during his times with the um with the Orlando Magic, as we all know, he was the number one guy there. And he just expected that. But obviously, Kobe Bryant was there. And he was not going to be the number one guy until possibly Kobe Bryant retires. And we all, in our minds, expected that Dwight Howard would accept that and be the number two guy. But obviously, it did not work out. Too many personalities was there. And uh, obviously... You know, it just not, did not work out at the end. Whether you look at 2020, Dwight Howard basically wanted to be in the NBA. He wanted to say to the people that, you know what, he is not washed up. He will, he will continue to play with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, sorry, with any sort of team that they will welcome him. And he was basically thinking that the Lakers is the best fit for him. And the Lakers also saw that in him as well. So... At the same time, the Lakers gave him a non-guaranteed contract because we all they already know how the personality of Dwight Howard is throughout his years uh, so far struggling, uh, you know, jumping to team uh, each team every single year, and uh, obviously you know he did not make a lot of great uh, relationships with certain teammates throughout the, his years uh, ever since he left the Los Angeles Lakers, and. You know the Lakers were just fearful of that so 
they gave him a non guaranteed contract. And obviously, they just said to him, you know what, you're not the number one, you're not the number two, or number three. You're just a guy who is going to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. And we just expect you to grab rebounds uh, and play great defense and just contribute very well with the Lakers. And obviously, you're not going to be the starter. You're going to be the bench guy. So obviously, his role as what he used to be diminished in a huge way. And Dwight Howard at 2020 uh, accepted his role as the guy to come off the bench and grab rebounds and play solid defense, which he was doing for this past season so far. So personality-wise, that all changed in 2013 and 2020. And obviously, the stats. The stats is nothing compared to what he has been averaging in 2013. Like I said, 19 points a game and I believe 10 to 12 rebounds a game. And, uh, you know, comparing to what he is averaging now because of his role and how his, uh, you know, he's not the number one guy, not number two. He is basically just a regular, uh, you know, guy on the roster. And obviously he's been averaging around like seven points a game. And I believe it's like seven to eight rebounds a game. But, um, you know, lately he's been averaging around like maybe 10 to 12 rebounds a game, uh, you know, when he is uh, red hot on uh, on the floor uh, against any team that he plays against. So um, that comparison is there. But I have to say, guys, the most thing that I love about Dwight Howard in 2020 is because that he accepted his role on the team. He's not the number one, not number two anymore. And that's basically what I what I appreciate from Dwight Howard is because of his commitment of just, you know, going out there, play great defense, do what you always done that everyone raves about you, and that is grabbing rebounds and playing solid defense. I mean, the the offense, obviously, you know, he can obviously do that for you. But as of right now, the Lakers have a lot of offensive uh, players that can score for the Los Angeles Lakers. And, you know, it's just obvious, okay? I mean, when you look at it, um, you know, he's not uh, averaging around 15 to 20 points a game. He's just giving us maybe 6 to 7 points a game. And that's plenty enough because he gives us the rebounding and the defense. So, obviously, 2020 is nothing compared to... you know, 2013 to White Howard, but I can honestly say, guys, if I had to pick between 2013 and 2020, we all know where we're going with this. We are going with the 2020 comparison of Dwight Howard. I would take Dwight Howard 2020 over the 2013 uh, Dwight Howard. So um, that's my own personal opinions, guys, when it comes to the Dwight Howard. A comparison between 2013 and 2020 because guys without without a doubt I when I want a player to contribute to a team in a huge way I would want Dwight Howard to show comparisons uh, of a of a Dwight Howard to just contribute to a a uh, a, a, a roster, a team, if you will, instead of be, uh, wanting a sort of privileged uh, type of player that obviously um, Dwight Howard wanted at that time back in 2013. Uh, and, you know, when it comes all said and done, Dwight Howard this season has changed his uh, aspect of his career uh in a huge way just by playing great defense and uh, obviously uh, rebounding is one of his uh, specialty which he has been doing averaging around uh, 10 to 12 rebounds a game and obviously it's been a huge success for the Los Angeles Lakers this season uh, because guys as we all you all probably know me by now the number one priority that I want from the Lakers is uh, playing great defense because they've been lacking that for the past couple of years now and obviously this season the Lakers have been improving very well when it comes to defense and that all has to do with uh, the help of Dwight Howard off the bench uh, and uh, obviously he's been tremendously been doing that uh, ever since uh, they they brought him back to the Los Angeles Lakers and uh, without a doubt guys I mean if I had to pick, like I said, I'll go with Dwight Howard 
2020 over the Dwight Howard in 2013. So guys, please comment down below, like, subscribe to the channel, share my videos all over Facebook, Twitter, all that good social media stuff. There's been a lot of uh, talks of me bouncing around when it comes to um, this particular video but i can honestly say guys uh you know most laker fans right now if they had to pick between 2013 and 2020 they will go with uh the 2020 dwight howard because of how he contribute to the los angeles lakers in a huge way and uh honestly i just love i just love how dwight howard changed his career around uh by rejoining the los angeles lakers and just giving us what he what we always wanted from him and that is uh obviously accepting the role of of just being a backup for javel mcgee and obviously you know when it's all said and done uh, the rebounding and defense is the number one thing that we all wanted from Dwight Howard. Uh, and if he, if he wants, if there's a little bit of help that maybe, um, I don't know if the Lakers are struggling offensively, he could give you that. But as of right now, defense and rebounding is the number one thing that I want from Dwight Howard. So guys, please comment down below, like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I believe my next video will be about, uh, uh, somehow, I believe it's going to be about, um, last time I checked I think I'm gonna do a starting lineup of the best sixth man in NBA history okay I'm gonna make that particular video very soon and I hope you guys stay tuned for that and give me your thoughts about it and also please give me your thoughts about this particular video about Dwight Howard 2013 versus Dwight Howard 2020 as a Los Angeles Laker because you know there's a lot of difference uh, different sort of opinions when it comes to this uh, particular video and obviously i want to know your thoughts and your opinions about it and i'll see you all in the next video thank you so much for watching go lakers take it easy guys